Uh, yeah, that more information than you needed. To yeah, explain. yeah, I was, you know, lots, lots, of, lots of words right there. Um, okay. So I'm gonna start streaming again, and this next section is going to be a bit mathematical. Uh, but we've got a drawing, and we're just gonna work it out and see what happens. Um. And I didn't work it out beforehand, so if it doesn't work, then you have to see your painful math while you do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the idea. Oh boy. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. All right. Just, just want to get there. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm feeling the struggle too. So there's a couple of observations when we are dealing with uh, the animation, and one observation is that the beam is never diagonal right uh, if we look at our drawing which is essentially the factory that we're looking at right here right that would be the, uh, the square then we either have am I recording yes am I streaming yes then why do I have more than 5 FPS okay then either we have this point right here or we have that point right there but we can never have both of these points right because then we would be going diagonal and that wouldn't make sense the same thing applies to the other diagonal so we either have this point right here or that point right there we're gonna use this fact um, and what are we gonna do? There is something called a dot product. Um, and I'm gonna sh give you a short explanation of what that means. So, say we have this circle. And for those that know what the unit circle is, you're thinking in the right direction. Now I just gotta find the center. I think this is it. And say that is the center right there of the circle yeah now if we have a vector going up which is from the center upwards uh, a vector describes change a movement a direction and a length uh, you could describe this vector as going north uh, with uh, 10 units right depending on how large the scale really is but we're going 10 squares north right here and um, that's important it's describing a direction and what we have is a certain point when we're we're saying well you're not actually going into the same direction still and that line is somewhere here allow me to make that a dotted line nope wrong one dashed there you go and what does that mean well if I have another vector say this direction here and I have another vector say this direction why is this not triggering there or another vector say this direction there or another vector that is on the other end of that line say these directions then intuitively speaking one can argue that all of the orange directions are roughly you know one more roughly than the other into the direction of the black arrow whereas all the blue arrows are very clearly not going into the direction of the black arrow and the dot product which is described as plus uh, times y2 uh, this is not the complete formal definition but let's just go with this for now 
um, let me refine that slightly dot v1 uh, yeah v1 v2 so by all means this is not uh, formally very correct but let's uh, let's deal with that for now the dot product is described as right, this right here as soon as it turns black there's my 5 FPS let's go all right yeah there it is all right so we take the vector and we multiply each component so every X component with the other X component Y component with the other Y component etc um, and if the result of that is positive then that means that we are one of these orange arrows where or our arrow is pointing somewhere above the gray line right on this unit circle but if the result is negative it means that we're pointing somewhere here on the bottom line we don't know where we just know that we're pointing in the other direction um, and the length of that product says something and you could technically compute the angle that we have right between uh, these two oops you could technically compute this angle between the vectors and stuff like that but that's not what we're interested in today what we're interested in today is knowing whether or not we are roughly looking into the same direction and why do we uh, find that interesting well let's look at what we have right here we have a center point that's pretty neat so let's make a circle around that uh, let's make that a dashed circle or a dotted one this is gonna make it easier to draw the uh, vectors this is the same unit circle that we have right here now what we're gonna do is we are going to uh, uh, considering these two points right here so this top right corner and this bottom left corner we are going to compute the direction from the center to that point right there and the direction from the center and the unit the builder now these are not dashed uh, not dashed normal let's make the cube dashed real quick so that we can see the line um, and what does this mean well if the result of the dot product of these two vectors is positive it means that this point is always going to be closer to the engineer than that point right there right and let's let's do a check real quick does that make sense well let's do that let's move this one around intuitively the point at the bottom is now closer right um, if we would move it right here it seems less intuitive but we have to remember that uh, we have a triangle inequality here and the longer axis is always shorter um, than these two combined so the triangle inequality says C is always shorter than a plus B squared I think is that the triangle inequality no I think it's just this uh, well you know people can correct me uh, in the comments but uh, the the idea is is that if this is C right that's C and this is A and that is B then intuitively speaking this distance is shorter than these two and why does that matter because the distance for this point here is the same as that one right there right so this distance is still shorter so this is still the closest point it's not that one and you could apply this again and again until you cross this boundary right here somewhere right now we're on the other side of this boundary which intuitively speaking is 
the moment where this right so if we would have those colored arrows again where we have orange that will be right here right there and then once we cross that line then intuitively speaking oops you sir are orange there you go and you were black we are no longer moving towards this point but we are moving away from it right that's the same thing as what we were describing on this other side right here and that means that the dot product which is this right here is going to be negative because we're moving away from it and if we're moving away from it it means that this point is now closer all right so let's look practical so we're gonna call this point here C there we go there's our C and for the sake of it we're gonna call this point here A and we're going to call this point here B right we've got C A and B and this engineer location here we're gonna call very conveniently E for engineer all right so what do we need well we need a direction from C to B and we need a direction from C to E so let's compute that let's go back to our code uh, what is C in this case well we have um, these coordinates right there so let's just change this up slightly and change them into CX CY C set and do that right there too so that's our center point right this is the center of the unit that's being built and this is the moment where I'm gonna make some mistakes so uh, you got to deal with it uh, these are the results that we're interested in oh which should definitely wait hold on yeah these are the results that we're interested in and this is the code that we're going to remove so let's just get rid of that right away put it somewhere down here and then comment it in All right, so now we're going to need A and we're going to need B. So let's start with the southwest point, southwest slash northeast comparison, and then this is northeast, and then we're going to do northwest, northwest slash southeast comparison. But for now, let's start with this one. We have, uh, by all means, this problem, uh, the third dimension that we have, which in Supreme Commander is the y-axis, is irrelevant. Uh, that doesn't matter at all. So we're just going to skip that. The fact that we do something with CY here is just used to the effect, but not for anything else. So we're just going to skip that. And we're just going to say, okay, we've got AX and a z and bx and a bz and they have as a value the center of cx so let's actually just write it out as this local a z local bx local bz so we start with the center of our position right here and here is the same thing but then with the Z coordinate oops yeah that's the first typo but I caught it so the house is not on fire yet that's always nice um, and then we need to add or subtract these OX and OZ values 
right? That's what we determined before. So this OX value is going to take us to that point, and we've got an OZ value that does the same thing. So in this case, if we want to have point A, then we're going to subtract all X and subtract and add OZ because uh, the X axis works in this direction and the Z axis works in that direction. And just to check real quick so that I'm not doing anything, let's go to show stats and then we can go to. Uh, Vision, camera, cursor, and if I move to the right, you can see that the X coordinate is going up. And if I move down, you can see that the Z coordinate is going up, right? And then it goes down. So this is uh, this idea here is correct. So that means that if I want point A, I subtract OX and I add OZ. So this is minus OX minus. Uh, plus OZ, great job. And in this case, we add OX and we subtract OZ because we're going up instead of down. So we plus OX minus OZ. And now we have these points defined. Um, we need the position of the engineer too. So let's get that in here. Local EX, EY, EZ is get uh, builder, get position, XYZ. Nope. XYZ like that. That's the same call right there. Yeah. And now we want to uh, compute. The direction from C to E and the direction from C to A. So let's do that. Uh, so here we go the direction from C to E X, right? This is this is this is looking great. Uh, which is E X minus C X and the direction from C D oh hold on. The direction from C to E Z is E Z minus C Z. Uh, by all means, if I make a typo, please tell me. <laughs> it's, uh, this is a bit tricky. But here we got the direction. And now we need to do the same thing for AX. So we've got the direction D uh, C AX, right? The direction from C to A which is the same idea as we have right here. But now, instead of, we've got that and that. And now we do a dot product, right? And we define the dot product as this right here. So x1 times x2, i1 times i2. So we can say local dot is the dot product this times that plus this times that and that is the x and then the z values in this case because uh, in spring parameter that's the z value not the y and if this dot product is larger than zero then Right, so if this dot product is positive, the sign is positive, then we know that uh, we are looking towards A. Right, so then we can say, well, this value, which was our result value that we were interested in, is AX, and that value is AZ. Otherwise, if this is not the case, then it's B, right? So if the dot product is negative, it means that B is closer to ourselves, right? Because the vector that we have here from C to A, that's this 
the CAX vector um, is then uh, then the engineer if you take that vector right there is pointing away from this vector right here so then we are moving towards B not very effectively at this point right but we're moving more towards B than we are towards A and then we do the same thing but then instead of southwest slash northeast we do northwest slash southeast so we can give or take essentially copy this right can't do this wrong this is a that is b so let's move this around a bit there are so many arrows there right so we've got northwest Uh, yes, so A is negative, negative, and this one is positive, positive, right? We've got north, so the Z is negative, right? That's the other direction, and we're going to the left, so that one's negative. Whereas with B, we go to the right and we go down, so that's positive, positive. So that's these here now these are already defined so we don't have to do local again for all of these and uh, technically we don't even have to do the dot product because we could put that just in there but for the sake of clarity let's not do that um, and instead of setting CX1 and CZ1 we are now setting the other point which is this right um, and then we have these values set now one may ask but chip where is the y value that's a very good point um, it's not there yeah so let's look at what the y value really is uh, technically we have this mesh extends uh, so first of all let's make the observation that the structure uh, flattens the ground right let's make that observation first so if we have this oh wait no I know the perfect location for this all right we've got this beautiful little hill here and let's make the observation that the factory flattens the ground and then enjoy this break while the engineer is slowly reclaiming the build area because I wanted to build this factory here. All right, so it flattens the ground into this beautiful bump, as you can see, that's really nice. And uh, the important part is, is that we are computing these points, right? This A, B, A, B, etc. cetera. Um, and the, if you look at it from the top, they actually do differ, right? The X and Z coordinates are different. But because we flatten the rectangle and structures are always vertical, the y value is always going to be the same, regardless of what point we pick. Which is the advantage of the fact that we can build structures like that and then have it oriented according to the cliff. Um, which means that we don't have to do all this complicated logic. Uh, what we could just say is, well, mm -hmm the uh, the y value that we have which is gonna be local cy cy which is uh, a conflict because we call that cy let's make it fy no not fu is uh, the height of the unit right so that's cy because we could build it on a cliff like this or we could build it on a cliff like there somewhere pretty confident there was a place here too uh, yeah, there it was uh, and then you know the, the building itself is higher right so we gotta take that into account and the mesh extent which is this value right here all right and let's actually rename all of these values. Let's just call this the final value. 
So we have fx1, fz1, fx1, fz1. We've got fx2, fz2, fx2, fz2, and oh, 2. And let's actually just define all of these somewhere here at the top. Allocate all the locals. We've got AX, AZ, BX, BZ. We've got a dot product. And we've got local uh, FX1. FZ1, FX2, FZ2, and FY. So there we have them. Um, all right. So now, <laughs> if I did everything all right, then at this point, we have the points FX1, FY, FX2, or FZ1. And we have the point fx2, fy, fz2, which is uh, in this example right here. If the engineer, if the engineer is right there, would be this point and that point. Um, so let's quickly finalize this and s replace all these references that we're seeing here to uh, cx1. So we've got this was fx1, this was fx2, this was fy, plus fy times a 1, okay, so that's brilliant, so this is just fy minus oy, yeah, because we're starting at the base with our b, then this is fy as well then we've got f z1 fz2 fz1 fz2 that means that there's no more references to this yeah just one of one so this is the last reference um Interesting, um, quick question for the audience. If these values are the same, what would this value then be? Zero. Exactly, mm -hmm. so this is gonna be zero. So uh -huh. this velocity vector here uh, can just be zero. Right, and that makes sense because when we did the animations at the start, uh, the beam remains at the same height throughout this animation. It doesn't actually move downwards. Uh, you can do that. We're actually going to do that at the end because you can do some really funky stuff with it. But uh, yeah, let's uh, start with this for now. Um, yes. And... I uh, think we are ready to do a test. So this one doesn't exist anymore. Here we replaced all the logic. These locals here don't need to be there anymore. Actually, we still need to log all these. Nope. Um, let's just uh, allocate these here too. So we've got local e x e y z and local d c e x d c e z. Yes. So here. Determine a direction to Boulder. Of 
compute a slash b points uh, compute direction c to a we can optimize this by just putting this in there if this dot product is positive then the engineer is cl engineer closer to a than it is to b uh, same story here compute a slash b points compute this direction again all right and we've got this sale fella you can put that in there we add the same comment to those wondering why aren't you making this into a local function I'll tell you in a second and then we've got the y compute the y component of the vectors which is always the same regardless of the point chosen because we flatten the ground mm -hmm. all right uh, these don't exist so let's fix that we've got fx2 fx1 fz2 fz1 for scanning scanning effect got you there gpg no worries um, the first point this seems Decent we take the average so that we start in the center take the average that we start in the center. We want to start at the bottom and then Yeah All right, you know, this is the moment Where we can get rid of I'm just uh, I Don't want to check it yet All right, let's check it does it still compile? It compiles. I'm surprised. Just as surprised as you are. It's still compiled. Oh. We did a mistake. Arithmetic on local OX and nil value. One on one. This is not mesh extends X. This is on create up build extends. So boink boink boink. All right, that that was not the mathematics. Just want to point that out. We're we're, we're not we're not there yet. Alright, closing my eyes. Oh yeah! Let's uh, look at this direction. There we go. Is it... Are we actually running this code? Let's, let's check. Look. Are we running this? Yes, let's check. So we kill you. Hell yeah. All right, so we're not accidentally still using the old function. Um, which means that we removed the uh, looping and the table allocations and all the other garbage that this was doing initially. All right, so just to reiterate what we did, uh, by all means, it was getting the boulder precision twice. So these are two unique tables, which means that uh, you could have just cached that, you know, store it as a local. Uh, we make a table here with four tables in it, which we're not doing anymore. Uh, we're doing a for loop in this get closest uh, vector. Right, so that is 
this function here, which again calls other functions and those functions call engine functions. So we're not doing that. Um, we're not doing this table.remove, which is a global, a get table, an on operation. And then we're doing that, you know, this function right here again, but then with three elements instead of four. Um, and instead of that, we do some arithmetics, which looks like a lot. But in comparison to all the table operations and all the looping and all the other garbage that we were creating with the previous implementation, this is cheap as hell. Uh, because arithmetics translates one on one almost uh, to actual as assembly instructions. Whereas all the table and looping and all that kind of stuff requires hashing operations. Uh, retrieval of the elements, etc., 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 and that's all uh, a bit expensive. Uh, now, one thing I was wondering: what if we have an Atlantis? Because that one is not square. Uh, so let's see what happens. Ah, that seems fair. Yeah, that seems that seems a bit ugly. Okay. Uh, hold on, let me. That's better. <laughs> All right. Science. Uh, science. That sucks. All right. Let me uh, actually. Let me just. Does it? Because if in the original computation these two points are closer to than that one, right? So I think in the original implementation, let me just close this. You know, let's close this. Let's just forget the fact that that happened. Let's just open up the FAF client. Get somebody else to test it for you. Yeah, can someone test this for me, please? Because my computer dies. If you uh, do an Atlantis, if it always works correct. What do you need me to do, Chip? Uh, make an Atlantis and uh, check if the... Uh, uh, wait, 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 I can do this. I can just start it, Ta -da, like that. Just launch FAF client. Do I need to do anything to it? You do. Uh, I'll, 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 do, I'll do it real quick. It's uh, my laptop can do this. I'm, I have faith in my laptop. This is gonna work out. Skirmish. That's still alive. Launch game. Yeah, I think it's going to do the same thing, because those two points are closest. Yeah, I think so too. I yeah. was going to say while you were while you were uh, explaining all the math behind it. Yeah. I used your um, your cached vector list idea to do the same thing. Yeah. I I created a cache version of the vector extents list. Yeah. And just substituted the four variables and then just table sorted it once. Yeah, you could totally do that too. Yep. That's the uh, same idea. But then you're still doing all the loops and all that kind of stuff. No, nope, no loops. No loops. Oh, no loops, no loops. All right. No, nope. one one table sort. That's all. Yeah, see, it does the same thing. So. Yeah, it's going to do the same thing. Yeah. So it's always going to find the by, by closest. Yeah. Whereas technically. It would be purely Purely distance related, yeah. Yeah, technically you'd wanted to find these. We can change that, but we are in a very lucky situation that we wanted the original effect and not the correct effect. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> come on, where's the blinking lights, man? <laughs> Don't start about those. <laughs> oh, okay, all right, I won't say. Well, do you need me to do anything? No, no, it, it's sure, there's, uh, no, there's a saying to describe this. We are bug for bug compatible. <laughs> Bug for bug compatible. <laughs> no, it's uh, it's all right, uh, uh, Dragon. Everything uh, everything is good. All right. Um, yeah. So after that session, <laughs> I did it right in in one go. I wasn't entirely expecting that, but I think uh, I think it all works. Uh, we're gonna take a bit of a break, uh, primarily for myself. Because I'm yes. a, I'm a nerve wreck right now, uh, and then after break, 
um, we're gonna re-look at the function and in particular we're gonna tackle this projectile that we have right here uh, and we're going to do a few additional up values um, and after that we're gonna do the comparison of so this is what we started with and what did we end with right what's the, the final result um, so that's uh, that's the plan but uh, before that plan is executed I'm going to take uh, a five minute break and we're gonna stop the recording